the dream I know Deep up my feelings feel Hello my people, welcome to this channel. The news where I don't carry one can give on ABC. The, the rep, the house of rep don't vow, say they go recover the national assets acquired through fraud. My people may will see how they want to do them. But before we go proceed with this news, welcome to Reality Letters GC, home of news and politics. Thank you all so much for joining us on today's news. If this is your first time of watching, do us a favor to like and subscribe and also share. And don't forget to turn the notification bell to get notified when next will drop our video. Because I'm sure you don't want to miss out the trending and latest news happening on social media. To all our amazing subscribers, thank you all so much for joining. To all our viewers, feel relaxed, enjoy, and stay connected. The House of Representatives Committee on Public Assets on Tuesday vowed to recover assets belonging to the nation acquired through fraudulent processes. The committee's chairman, Ademori Kuye, stated this in Abuja at a one day retreat organized by the panel on the team Guardian of Public Trust, transforming public asset oversight and legislation. Fielding question on the sidelines of the retreat, Kuya said, as a chairman of the committee, that he's ready to step on towards, that he's ready to go all the way in ensuring that all federal government assets are recovered from looters, from people who have misappropriated them both in the private and public sectors. So they are ready and they have the support of the Mr. President Bola Ahmed Tunubu and the leadership of the National Assembly to do their work without fear or favor. So they want to assure the Nigerians that every asset belonging to them will be recovered. Even the concessioned assets, those who are in charge, must work according to the concession agreement. On the tags before him and his colleague, he said that the committee is set to ensure that there is transparency and accountability in the management and disposal of public assets going forward. So when he talked about the public asset, he said they don't mean physical assets only, that they are referring to both tangible and intangible assets given the investments by the federal government in concession, privatization and all of that on the evaluation of national assets across the country. Queer forted the data credited to the Ministry of Finance, saying that what they have in this country in terms of assets have not been properly valued on the website of the Ministry of Finance. And the Ministry of Finance are claiming that federal government assets are worth $18 billion. But that is not true. From their own estimates, the value of over $100 billion when they put all this record together in a proper asset registered and harmonization of the law with a legislative backing for Ministry of Finance. They can then efficiently perform their responsibilities and this will help the country. Earlier in his opening remark, Kuye informed members of the committee that the tax before them was to kickstart a process that would not only bring about proper documentation of national assets but also work against financial losses in the future. So they have witnessed how inadequate records have led to significant financial losses in this country. A gap in our national accounting that they can no longer afford. So it is time for them to move forward towards a future where every asset is meticulously recorded and their value and potential is fully acknowledged. So they must picture this asset as hidden treasuries, merely awaiting the right strategy to transform them into vital cogs, contributing to our economic machinery. Through rigorous audits and strategic planning, they will unlock their potentials by channeling their latent value back into the economy. Kuya said even as he pledged the readiness of the committee to sanction any Ministry, departments and agencies found one thing going forward and they have stand firm in their commitment to enforce sanction on ministries, departments and agencies that deviate from the set regulations. And this stance is not just about maintaining order, it's about instilling a culture of accountability and responsibility. So this will align with the Federal House of Representatives agenda and they will not shy away from sanctioning agencies responsible for abandoned or unapproved projects. So this is part of their border goal to re-engineer our country through efficient asset management. 
Okuyi, who represented Shomolu Federal Constituency, Lagos State, further stressed the significance of having a comprehensive national register of publicly owned assets because it will serve as the foundation of their own understanding of government assets, both domestically and internationally, by describing the register as a tool that will be clarity and transparency to their operation. Early in his presentation, Chief Executive Officer and Managing Director of the Ministry of Finance, Armstrong Tangang, appealed to the committee to assist the agent in performing the role with minimal difficulty. Represented by the Executive Director, Rick's Management of the Ministry of Finance, Oluwakimi Babalubo, urged the lawmakers to assist the agency with laws to address political intervention, corruption, and corporate governance. I pray that they stick to this because if they are able to fight against those assets that our nation nigeria have lost i think there will be a good turnaround if that happened so guys i would like to know your thoughts your contributions your opinions are in the comment section i would love to hear from you once again if you have not subscribed to our youtube page yet please do us a favor to like and subscribe and also share and don't forget to turn the notification bell to get notified when next we drop our video because i'm sure you don't want to miss out the trending and latest news happening on social media once again, thank you all so much for staying to with us. We really do appreciate. On this note, we have come to the end of today's segment. It's like on your witness. Stay safe, guys. Bye. 400 people to a conference like this is too small. You want to hold the conference sometimes in future. Because if you talk about climate change, we had the Kotel Convention in 1976, you remember? We have it in Nairobi. We have it in Kenya. Now we have it in uh, Dubai. It's Nigeria Amy at hosting this conference one day because your data, your historical data about participation will be very important. How many delegates have you been able to put and how many times have you been able to participate? How many people from your country are able to deliver papers? So talking about foreign or something is nothing. You remember that at the six states of the Federation, remember also China is a polluter of the environment. Nigeria is the one taking the bonds. Because Nigeria is at the receiving end. We are suffering from the impact of environmental deregulation. So, so therefore, you will understand that China will bring in more people who are the polluters who are supposed to pay us, whereas we people who are the ones suffering the consequence of environmental deregulation, we are supposed less evil. I was one of the conference rooms when President Obama, President Tinubu delivered a fantastic paper, if I extempora of it. And all the presidents were there, Kerry and all, many of them. So the number of Nigeria in that hall are less than 20. You mean the president will give a speech and 20 people will be there to, you know, share him up? Whereas it's in one of the, one, one of the country president was coming in, he came with about 60, 70 boys and they just broke the, 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 the security system. They don't even go through the checks and they, they just invaded the place and went with their president in. So we should understand, it's not about People saying 420, 520. We are talking about climate change.